Welcome to homework one. We're going to be breaking some code today. So what you need to do for this homework is break a few incorrect implementations of the fixed size queue we've been working with earlier in the unit. So let's go ahead and take a look at what the queue is supposed to do first. So the queue class is just a fixed size queue of integers and the constructor right down here is supposed to take a single integer parameter greater than zero that is the maximum number of, number of elements that the queue can hold at a time. And there are four methods that we're going to need to concern ourselves with. And these method calls are all you're going to have access to during this. Uh, the empty call should return true if and only if the queue currently holds no elements and false otherwise. And the full method should do the exact opposite. It should return true if and only if the queue cannot hold any more elements. It's completely full and false otherwise. So you would call them like this or like this for the empty and full methods, respectively. The end queue is the only one that takes a parameter. It takes an integer to put into the queue. It returns true if it successfully does so, and it returns false otherwise which would only happen, or should only happen, if the queue is full. And the DQ method does not take any parameters and removes an integer from the queue and returns it. If it doesn't, if it fails to return anything, which should only happen if the queue is empty, then it returns none. So as an example, you have this code where we first create a queue of size 1, then we check if it's empty, which it should be immediately since we haven't done anything with it. So is empty should be true. Then we try to enqueue the number 10, which also should succeed since it should be able to hold one more uh, element. So succeeded should be true. Then we check if it's full, which should also be true because we've just enqueued one element. We can only hold one element. So full sh is full should be true. Then we dequeue that element and should return 10 into value. So value should be 10 from here to give you an idea of what we should expect from the queue implementation. Now the five queues that you're going to test for are going to have uh, bugs here and there in them. So they're not going to behave exactly like this. So I would very much recommend reading over this specification carefully before you start testing. Now to test the five queues, you're going to do exactly what you would do here. You would instantiate a queue and call these four methods in some fashion. And then using assert statements, you would try to break this code and throw an assertion error. On the back end, we'll have a test harness that runs your code against all of the buggy queue implementations and will return the incorrect output if you manage to find it. And when you run submit on your code, it will tell you how many of the buggy queue implementations you have managed to successfully catch. As an example of what your test code should do, if we run my implementation against the buggy code, then we see that we get an assertion error here. So your code should run assertion errors for uh, all of the buggy code. We'll have a test harness that will run your code against all five of the incorrect implementations. And when you submit your code, we'll tell you how many of the implementations you've managed to successfully catch. And your goal is to catch all five. It took me, I think, 22 lines to catch all the bugs. So let's see if you can beat me.